And so, as a farm, I, 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 I love to tell persons that I'm a person of the soil. Sometimes I don't remember that I am a teacher educator. That's how passionate I am where agriculture is concerned. And so, this afternoon I'll be looking at the Ministry of Agriculture support for sustainable farming practices in rural Jamaica in the current reality of climate change. And so I've been hearing about climate change for many, many years, but it is real. And so this research is in collaboration with RADA, the St. Andrew office. Just an overview. Oh, <laughs> sorry. Just go walk a bit. <laughs> All right, that's the overview. All right. And so, when we look at employment in Jamaica, agriculture em the, the, the sector of agriculture employs 15.69% of the total population of Jamaica, based on World Bank 2023. And if my memory serves me right, it's about 2.83 million persons we have in Jamaica. So you can do the math to know the exact number to have an idea as to how many persons are employed in the agriculture sector. I am proud to say that had it not been for agriculture, I, could, I would not be standing here today. My tuition at both for both my diploma and my bachelor's degree were financed from agriculture. So I am really grateful for agriculture. And so we have heard about these campaigns, you know, plant what you eat and eat what you grow. And now I'm hearing the second one. I want you to just read it for me. The second one. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So this campaign was launched in December at Charlotte Teachers College, where Minister invited many teachers across Jamaica, agricultural based and food and nutrition, to inform us about this vision. But how are we going to do this in the current reality of climate change? The question is how. At this time, I just want to show you a video, just a short video, of my involvement in agriculture, and then I will build on it. So that's actually my farm in Westmoreland. An interview was done two years ago with, with the Jamaica the, Information. There is the stigma that agriculture is for a particular group of persons. But I am proud to say that that stigma has been reduced significantly. So no longer is agriculture a last option. It's a primary option where persons are now interested in pursuing even studies at the master's level in agriculture. Getting started in agriculture can be tricky, so there are a number of things. Mm -hmm. right, thank you. All right, this statement was the introduction. So the purpose of this study that I did, the purpose is to investigate the extent to which farmers are practicing <laughs> sustainable agroproduction and the support given by government. This study was guided by three research questions. The first one, what are the best agricultural practices of farmers in two rural parishes in western Jamaica? The second research question, is there a statistically significant difference in agricultural practices by a gender of farmers? And the final one, what is the level and type of support given to farmers by the Ministry of Agriculture? 
The significance of this study provides critical information to the government to provide import to, to the government to provide improvement to the agriculture sector. Critical data on current farming practices and their relation to agricultural sustainability and climate change. And so I just want to bring this picture to you where I look at sustainable agriculture. And so while we are in the current reality of climate change, we have to be realistic. How can we ensure that as farmers, we are utilizing sustainable practices? And sustainable agriculture seeks to sustain farmers, resources, and communities by promoting farming practices and methods that are profitable, environmentally sound, and good for our communities. And so, farming 100 years ago, 50 years ago, cannot be the same in 2023. We have to change the approach because climate change is a reality. And so we have to ensure that we harness new technologies that will enhance our operation where farming is concerned. And so in short, looking at ICAR 2023, he said that sustainable agriculture should be economically viable. It should be socially supportive and ecologically sound. Looking at the the five pillars of sustainable agriculture by Worth 2017. There's some similarity where Worth 2017 said sustainable agriculture should be viable and it is linked to economics and I heard said that as well. And so we're not just doing farming because we can plant. It should be economic and it should be contributing to the country's GDP. It should be taking care of families, including education. Also, when I look at acceptability, there's a correlation there as well where these two writers are concerned. And so climate change is the global phenomenon of global climate transformation characterized by the changes in neutral climate. And so, we're saying that the time is hot. Oh, every day the time is hot. And we talk about the ozone layer, we talk about many things. And when we look at the industrial and human activities, now that before we have more motor vehicles, we have a lot of factories, and so all of these things are affecting climate change. So there should be an attempt to mitigate are to reduce climate change. And it can be done by ensuring that we have technological measures aiming to reduce the amount of emissions of greenhouse gases. And just to support this, the Prime Minister, Honorable Andrew Holness, in June 2022, he welcomed and announced the United States Caribbean Partnership to address climate crisis 2030. So it is very critical. And food security is a concern. If we're not careful, as we experienced COVID recently, and COVID sh shared a lot of experiences and gave us a lot of lessons, there have been situations where there, there have been shortages of various food items, and it was not as intense, but there may come a time the next few years where we cannot get the important food at all. What are we going to do? It's not that we don't have the resources. We do have the resources. But technology is important, and we're talking about AI. AI is also important where agriculture is concerned. And so data, it's important to drive the operation of agriculture. And so we can use robots in the field to gather data. We're not there yet in Jamaica, but it's happening in developed countries, such as Canada. And one of the reasons why Canada is considered a developed country is because of the emphasis 
placed on agriculture. So there are some technologies that we should include in our practices, such as hydroponics, such as hydroponics, such as protected agriculture, and the use of computers. You know that traditional farmers don't do that, but that's the way to go. And so just to share a bit about hydroponics, that's one of the technologies that we can really look at now. Instead of planting just in the soil, when you plant in the soil, you know that grass and we competing with the same nutrients of the intended crop. And because of that, it will affect the yield. So when you compare hydroponics farm with traditional farming, the yield is different. It can times four. And so where food security is concerned, let's say traditional farming, a tomato plant may give you 20 pounds at the end. If you should use, let's say, hydroponics, you can time that by four. And so greater food security, the same period of time, even quicker, because it's a controlled environment. So persons from the urban areas, they say they don't have any space to plant. You can think of vertical farming. It's known as urban agriculture, which hydroponics is an example. And when you exit, you will see a model on the outside here just for the purpose that we can see it. We can have hands-on experience where it is concerned. A greenhouse is also out there. And so it's the partnership with RAD why this is happening. So I want you to go and the extension officers are out there and they will explain more. And so there are different types of hydroponics. We have the wick system, the water culture system, nutrient film technology, just to name a few. And those are some of the images. So why protected agriculture? Protected agriculture involves greenhouse production. It refers to the use of technology to modify the natural environment of vegetable crops in order to extend their growing season and produce higher yields. And so, what are we doing in the current reality of climate change? Just to share the methodology of the study, quantitative study was used using the survey design. Two questionnaires were developed, one for the farmers and one for the administrators, and the convenient sampling was used. Descript statistics, descriptive statistics and the use of SPSS was used to analyze the data. This table is just showing the gender, age, and experiences. So 26 farmers were actually completed the questionnaire. And just to look at the experiences, nine out of the 26 farmers, they have less than 10 years. But eight out of the 26, they have more than 31 years. And so we can see that the new entrant farmers and the farmers who are at the end of exiting, there is like, we we'll call it a balance out, but that wasn't the purpose of the study, but it's revealing here. And so, 10 questions were asked, 13 questions, but 10 used in the Likert scale. So there, those are the questions. From this table, it is showing that 17 from the 26 are 65.4% of the farmers say that they practice crop rotation. But when we look, 34.6% don't use compost. So organic farming is not being practiced as much. And so this is critical. Recently, there was a, no supply of fertilizers coming in the country. The ingredients to make fertilizers were not accessible at all. And when we did get access to them, the price is actually double. And so I don't know how farmers manage it now. One bag of fertilizer, 50 kg, is like $14,000. Very expensive. But if we practice organic farming, then there may not be any great concern. If we utilize hydroponics, then there may not be any concern for 
that kind of fertilizer. So we are no longer going to fertilize, but we are now going to fertigate. <laughs> Continuing, another time is going. The ten questions were analyzed. The ten questions, I use a five point Likert scale. So if all respondents were supposed to respond strongly agree, then they'll get a total score of 50. From this table, one person scored 30 to 34, six persons 35 to 39, eight 40 to 44, and 11 45 to 50, which total out a 73.1% practicing sustainable agriculture. But the challenge is, though they are practicing sustainable agriculture, they are not utilizing protected agriculture, and so that is the challenge. So you are practicing sustainable agriculture, but you are still affected by drought. You are still affected by flooding. But if you are practicing protected agric sustainable agriculture in the protected way, then the challenges will be less. Next. And so from the analysis, there is no statistical difference on farming practices by gender. Therefore, the same practices that the males are using, the females are using them just as effective. All right, these questions were asked by the administrators. Uh, I provide farmers with resources from the ministry. 90% strongly agree and 10% agree. Uh, next. And the last question there, farmers can integrate hydroponics models in agriculture and conduct tours as additional income and 100% strongly agree. The conclusion, there is great collaboration observed between RADA and farmers. And what I did, when I analyzed the findings from the administrators and the farmers, I then called interviewed a few farmers to find out if what the administrators are saying is actually factual. And from that, I see where they do get that level of expert advice. They get seeds and seedlings, fertilizers. Also, in conclusion, initiated partnership with RADA and non-agricultural tertiary institution. You may be wondering what I'm talking about here. But at Chicago Teachers College, for example, we're not known for agriculture. We don't offer any bachelors in agriculture, but we do have a farm. And so we are now partnering with RADA to see how best we can enhance the process. Continuous research is being led. Recommendations to the Ministry of Agriculture. They need to construct more food storage processing plants. And so they, they, they may say that there is one in Ealing, St. Elizabeth. But based on the framework of that processing plant currently, imagine I spend a lot of thousands to pay, pay workers daily, harvest the crops, and I'm not going to go to the processing house, pay into the facility. That's not farmer friendly at all. The system that we should have from the Ministry of Agriculture is one where farmers can take their produce and go take to the facility. Then the farmers should be paid at a particular time. But that system is not in effect at all. And so we need to conduct more training sessions as well for farmers and more sensitization sessions on climate change. Recommendations for farmers, they need to practice more protected agriculture, practice more cooperative farming. And so instead of 20 farmers in the little community just planting what they want to plant, have a strong cooperative group. For example, farmers can make real money from supplying hotels. But one farmer may not be able to produce the amount of vegetables weekly, but if you partner as a group, 
then you will see how realistic it is. And I'm talking from example. So, for example, I supply Megamar, for example, vegetables. But if I have great partnership with other farmers, then the process will be easier. All right, so that's it. Thank you, Mr.